All right, team, I'm really excited about 18.3. It's gonna be a really fun one. It's very high skill. There's a lot going on. I'm excited to dive into this one with you really quickly to go over the workout. Two rounds for time, 100 double unders, 20 overhead squats at 115 and 80 pounds, another 100 double unders, 12 muscle ups, another 100 double unders, 12 dumbbell snatches, 100, another 100 double unders, 12 bar muscle ups, that's round one, and we've already done 400 double unders. Let's shake that off, this is gonna be good. Two rounds of that, um, I think we're gonna see some big things. Uh, I think we're gonna see a lot of cool things in this workout from the community. Uh, first things first, I think that we're gonna see a lot of people overcome their struggle with double unders. Um, so just remember practice 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 you have a whole weekend to do so and then I think we're gonna see a lot of people get their first muscle up I love seeing that muscle ups were something that were very hard for me transitioning from, from football to CrossFit I had never done anything gymnastics re related really so Being able to, to move into that transition and get a ring muscle up get a bar muscle up was very cool and very exciting for me So I always cheer super loud all the high fives to everyone out there who gets their first muscle up. Really excited for you guys. Um, let's dive into this really quick. There's a lot I want to cover. I want to show you some warm ups options and I want to show you some movement demonstrations. So stay tuned to that at the end of the video. I'm going to kind of start walking through some uh, demonstrations and warm up. Uh, a couple key points smooth is fast. Smooth is fast. Be smooth through this workout. You don't have to be super quick and frantic. Be smooth through everything. That going into the next thing, if you're smooth, you're gonna be fast, but being smooth is also gonna help manage your heart rate. This workout is gonna be, it's, your heart rate is just gonna go through the roof if you let it too soon. So, I don't want you to be sucking wind three minutes in. Be smart about how you approach this. 100 doublers into 20 overhead squats, great, no big deal. Into another 100 double unders though, your heart rate's all of a sudden gonna to start to be spiking a little bit, and you're three minutes in, and you haven't even gotten to the muscle ups. So be smart there, manage that really well because all of a sudden you're here and your heart rate's through the roof and you can't get a muscle up. You have to wait until your heart rate settles back down. So if you need to, take a couple breaks on your double unders. Be smart about that. Just make sure your rep cycle on your double unders is fast or if you're uh, doing single unders, same thing. Be smart about that, manage your heart rate. Uh, as you can see here, dubs, they're a heart rate trap. So if you're looking to go unbroken on your double unders, well, great. You're gonna go unbroken on your double unders, but your heart rate is gonna go through the roof. So if that's your case and you wanna play that game, great, your heart rate's gonna be very high when you get into the muscle ups. If not, you can manage that, you can keep a low heart rate, take a couple breaks, manage your heart rate there. Double unders are a heart rate trap. Be smart. Uh, another key point, save energy. Save as much energy as you can throughout this workout. Don't do things in a wasteful manner. Be very efficient with your movement. Um, one of the important things in this is, is because it's so high skilled, you can be a little inefficient throughout the workout and all of a sudden it bites you in the butt towards the end of the workout or your double unders start to fatigue. Your muscle ups all of a sudden go out the window because your, your double unders were inefficient and your shoulders are fried so now you can't do muscle ups. Uh, there's a lot of ways to be inefficient in this workout and that can cause some problem with another movement. There's a lot of interference here. This is just a shoulder workout, shoulders, shoulders, shoulders everywhere. So be smart about that, save energy, practice efficient movement. Uh, that leading into save your shoulders. In everything you do, try to find a way to relax your shoulders, take pressure off your shoulders, just just kind of be smooth throughout the whole workout. Um, again, this is a very high skill workout, so practice the movements, possibly over the whole weekend. For some of you, you're like, ah, gung-ho, Thursday night, I'm gonna do it, Friday morning, I'm gonna do the workout, I'm gonna hit Friday night lights with everybody, and you've only given yourself a day to practice the movements. Take the whole weekend if you have to. Let's maximize our open performance by being smart, managing our time, um, learning, relearning the basics of these movements, the fundamentals of these movements. So when we get to the point of doing the workout, we're more efficient, we can be way smoother and we can manage that heart rate um, and save energy throughout the whole workout. 
So uh, don't be ashamed, take the time, get with some friends, watch some videos, practice the movements, figure out how you want to approach those. Um, with a quick warm up, we'll go over this again really quick, but something I was thinking would be good is go for a 10 minute bike or row um, on the assault bike or on the, uh, the Concept 2 rower. Do some shoulder and hip activation and I will show you what that looks like. I'm actually gonna show you a little bit what I do for shoulder activation and what, what I do for hip activation. Uh, do some stretching and some mobility work. I'll show you a pec stretch that I do. It's very basic, very simple. And then as well as some mobility with the ball um, that, I, that I do. I like to do a little bit, kind of open up the shoulder before I do muscle ups. Um, and then as well as just a quick hamstring and calf stretch that I enjoy. I always think kind of helps me warm up a little bit for double unders. Um, couple key points on movements. And I'll show you this again when we go through and walk through the movements. But on the overhead squats, one of the things, main things I want you to think about on a regular basis through the movement, stack your wrists over your ankles. So when the bar is overhead, I want your wrist over your ankles. That means you're in a good, solid position. The bar is overhead, you're in line. It's stacked in the most efficient manner. On the ring muscle-ups, have fast elbows. Fast elbows are extremely important. I've seen too many people have enough power to get high enough to get a muscle up, but they don't turn their elbows over fast enough to be able to support the catch. So have fast elbows. Dumbbell sn uh, snatch, be smart on your transition. You can waste a lot of time transitioning the dumbbell um, and you can also just kind of wear yourself out a little bit if you're not doing it well and you're not doing it smart. Bar muscle up, have a strong hip extension. It's a little bit easier to turn over on a bar muscle up in my opinion, but it's also a little easier to lose the hip extension and all of a sudden we start to pull too early. So have a strong hip extension. On the double unders, don't muscle it. Double unders should be smooth and consistent. You should be able to breathe during your double unders. You should be able to, when you wanna take a breath, take a breath. Don't muscle it. If you're muscling it, your shoulders are gonna tire out, your heart rate's gonna go through the roof. So. Uh, we're gonna go over to the warm-up options, and, and uh, we're gonna start going through the warm-up options. I'll show you what those look like, um, and then we'll work through the movements as well. So, your warm-up's gonna start off with some sort of cardio piece. I suggest a bike or a rower. I think it's just gonna get your heart rate up. It's gonna get the blood flow going. It's gonna make this easier, uh, this workout feel easier. There's some science behind it. We won't get into that for now, but just trust me, you're gonna to wanna to get your heart rate up a little bit before doing this workout. So get on the bike, get on, a, uh, on the rower, go for 10 minutes at a nice, easy to moderate pace. You kinda of wanna to get to the point where you're about to start breaking a sweat. So from there, I suggest doing some shoulder and hip activation. For shoulder activation, I like to use crossover symmetry but you, can get, you guys can use um, bands and do very similar things. The whole idea is just to get the shoulders warmed up and moving. So what I like to go through is a couple different movements. I'll pull back. Pull down. Pull straight through. Pressing. And some internal rotation. So for your shoulders, what I like to do is I like to do eight reps per movement pausing two seconds at the top of each movement. Give that a shot, you could replicate that with bands. There's uh, many different uh, stretches that you can do with the band. Just find things to activate the shoulder in different planes. Um, again, you can take that band, you can step on it. You can do a lot, of the, a lot of similar things. I suggest using a light band. 
You don't want a heavy band because you don't want to tire your shoulders out. You just want to get them warmed up, get them activated. For my hips, I like to do this thing called seven way hips. Um, I'm just going to run you guys through that really quick, but uh, I go through seven movements, 10 reps per movement on each side. You also look really good. So here, making sure the glute, you want to roll forward on your hip a little bit, making sure the glute is the thing that's working the most. Up this way, 10 reps. 10 reps. Back, 10 reps. Forward and back. Circles forward. Circles backwards, both 10 reps. And then a bicycle. Flip over, do the other side. Um, that's uh, what I like to do for my hip activation. It kind of gets all the blood flow going, loosens up my IT bands quite a bit, um, which really, I think, affect the calves quite a bit in my opinion. So I like to just make sure that all of my backside is nice and relaxed, especially for that amount of double unders. Uh, the next thing, uh, just a couple stretches that I'll make sure that I do um, since I'm down here, I like to do for my calves and my hamstrings, I like to lay on my back, pull on my toe, lay my head back, and I feel this stretch through the back of my calf and my hamstring. Um, this is one that I like to do together, especially when doing double unders. I feel like it warms me up really well. The other stretch I like to do is just crossing over, reaching down. Great stretch, love that one. Um, for my pecs, I like to grab a beam, rotate, all of these stretches I hold for about a minute um, and then kind of continue to stretch as needed. For mobility, uh, for your pecs, what I like to do is I like to take a lacrosse ball. And for my, especially for my muscle ups, get right into the shoulder pec insertion, lean against something, especially a beam, and move through different planes. Give that a shot, see what feels good. Um, it's just a great way to get warmed up. Next, let's talk about the overhead squat. Uh, what I was talking about with having your wrist stacked over your ankles is extremely important. The other thing that I want you guys to think about when doing overhead squats is a cl the closer your grip, the more your shoulders are gonna be saved. If you have a really wide grip, you're doing a, this is a very wide angle and there's a lot of load for your shoulders to support. If you can have a closer grip, that weight's gonna be stacked more over your, uh, your um, your skeletal system and be able to, your, your actual body frame, and you're gonna be able to hold that a lot better. So if you can narrow your grip, do so, I think it'll help you a lot. So I get a nice narrow grip. Wrists over ankles, really focus on chest up, knees out. focus on that it's gonna be really good for you guys hope you guys out a lot uh, for your dumbbell snatch one of the couple of notes on the dumbbell snatch don't hold the dumbbell overhead don't pause overhead if you're going to, if you need a break during the dumbbell snatch set it down get it to the ground take your break down there if you're holding it overhead you're just tiring out your shoulders even more remember we want to save the shoulders so Dumbbells overhead, don't pause here. Transition, lock out, move. Lock out, move. Making sure both dumbbell heads touch the ground at some point. Um, 
And again, if you're starting to get tired during the dumbbell snatches and need a break, set it down. Double unders. Be smooth. Remember, over this many reps, cycle rate matters a lot. One of the things that I heard during the announcement was a very smart cue by Chase Ingram, and that's being bouncy off the ground. Don't jump, bounce. Be really light on your feet and quick to get off the ground. Don't bend your knees a lot. The more time, like if you're bending your knees and you're jumping, you're spending a lot of time on the ground and you're having to use a lot of muscle to be able to get yourself back up. Your reps are also gonna be slower. So make sure that you're being bouncy and you're quick with movement. Hands down by your side, using your wrists to move the rope, not your shoulders. If you trip up, don't freak out. It's 800 reps. If you're gonna trip up at some point, that's fine. Take a deep breath, get right back into the movement. When you're transitioning, set your rope down in a smart way so you can get back into it easy. Let's talk about muscle up. I don't have a bar to show you what I'm talking about with uh, having a strong hip extension for the bar, so I'm going to show you that on the rings as well. But what I just wanted you to see how fast a turnover I have with my elbows when I kick. Also, notice this, when I do extend my hips, I'm just stopping my feet, I'm not bending my knees ever. So don't bend your knees, you lose a lot of momentum when you do that. Stop your feet and pop your hips, very important. Once you pop your hips, all I want you to think about is fast elbows. Very, very fast elbows. We got to get those turned over so we can support our body weight. The other thing I want you to think about is not resting up at the top. If you're resting up at the top, you're wasting energy, you're tiring your shoulders and your triceps out. So again, I'm going to show you another rep. Watch how fast and how violent I pop my hips and then how quick I am with my elbow turnover. Alrighty guys, I hope those tips help. I hope the movement demonstrations help. Get a good warm up. Have fun with this one guys. Don't get frustrated if you're double unders, start to trip up or you're having a hard time. Take a deep breath, believe in yourself, have fun with it. We'll see you guys next week.